The thing that jumps out at you is the, is the, are the people. I'm sure that whatever happened to my grandfather and whatever you know he experienced wouldn't be too, too dissimilar to, to what I was seeing and um, hearing as I was going through the footage. The Imperial War Museum approached you three years ago to see what you could do with the footage from the First World War. Did you ever have any idea at that point you'd be able to achieve what you have? No. No, no, their, their brief to me was really, they was, I could do anything I wanted um, so long as it sort of it used their footage in you know, some sort of a fresh way. That, that was their only brief, and I didn't have a clue. I, 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 I mean, in fact, I, I sat there thinking, what the hell can I do? Because I've seen all the World War I documentaries with the footage, and it's always, you know, in there, and it's... And I just, but anyway, I said, well, look, let me think about it. I went back to New Zealand and I, the first thing that came into my mind was, um, I wonder how well you can restore this footage with the computer technology we've got. And back in New Zealand, we've got a huge visual effects company with thousands and thousands of computers and, um, and, and, and you know, huge computer firepower that we use for visual effects. And I thought, well, I don't think anyone's ever really seriously tried to grab some of this footage and restore it to its, to, to its ultimate degree. And what's possible, I didn't know. And so I asked them to send me four minutes of, of film, just four minutes that they could scan. They scanned it and sent it to me just as a test. And I, I was blown away once we'd finished doing our work on it. We had to figure out what to do. But once we were finished that four, with that four minutes, I just couldn't believe how good it looked. I mean, it, was, it, it blew me away. Well, I, I read that you went through, the team of you went through 600 hours of audio. And about 100 hours of footage, yeah. And did that, yeah. after going through all of that, did that change your perspective on the First World War at all? Yes, it did. Well, the thing that jumps out at you is the, is the, are the people, you know, the humanity, because they, they suddenly become real human beings. They don't become Charlie Chaplin. They're not Charlie Chaplin, spit up jerky figures anymore. They're, they're real people with all the nuances and subtleties of human beings. So therefore, it, it's told me that this should be a human story, not a war story, you know, you know in terms of strategies and tactics. And then it's... Um, then I thought, well, okay, well, that, in terms of the audio part of it, the only voices we should hear should be the voices of the veterans that fought the war. So then I, I started to get all the art, all the audio, and I said to the BBC and um, the, the Imperial War Museum, I said, don't send me any audio from when the men are very old. I don't want 80, 90-year-old men. Just send me uh, audio that you might have done in the 1960s, 1970s, when you know, some of the guys, if, they were, if you were interviewed in the 1960s, you're not, much, you're not much older than I am. You're quite young. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not ancient old guys and they're quite vibrant and their memories are not, you know, they're pretty sharp. And um, so they, I, I got 600 hours of this audio, which was unbelievable, um, incredible stuff. And the thing that, I guess, the thing that stood out from the audio is the lack of, you know, self-pity that these guys had. You know, we, we've imposed a lot of pity on them. We, we've imposed our own view of the First World War that we sent these young guys to the, to the meat grinder, you know, the slaughter of the Western Front, and you know, that on one level is completely true, there's, not, there's no, that's not an, an, an accurate description, but, but the soldiers themselves d didn't view it like that, you know. When the war was not very active, it was really rather fun to be in the front line. It was not very dangerous, a sort of out-of-door camping colony with the boys, with a slight spice of danger to make it interesting. It was, um, it was such an emotive documentary, like I say, and I read that a lot of your interests in the First World War came from your grandfather, who you dedicated the documentary to. Um, what do you think he would make of the film? I'd love to know. I mean, I never met him. He died in 1940, so... Look, I, I don't know. I mean, I was aware, all the time when I was making the film, I was aware that I was getting an insight into his life because you know just I'm sure that whatever happened to my grandfather and whatever you know he experienced wouldn't be too too dissimilar to what to what I was seeing and I'm um, hearing as I was going through the footage and I I was you know ac acutely aware that this was this was probably you know I, I'm, I'm you know this is much be what how he felt and these are the sort of sights that he was seeing I mean there's a mine explosion and one of the shots in the film a big mine goes up and my, and my grandfather was about a hundred yards on the other side of that mine at that exact moment when that mine exploded so I think well I'm actually looking at something that my grandfather saw you know the same thing on, I'm, I'm actually seeing what he saw from a hundred years ago 
um, which was, which, you know, so it's little moments like that, little personal moments, sort of, sort of, I felt like that. But, but look, my grandfather was, you know, he was, he was one of, one of, what, nine, nine million men that the Britain, uh, from, the, from Britain and its empire that fought, and so it's, you know, no different, no different to him than he, you know, anyone else. But I think that's the point of the film really is that the, the war's not that long ago that most people in, in, in Britain and the old empire, you know, Canada and Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, you know, most of us have got family that were in that war not that far ago, you know, great grandfathers, great uncles, you know, they're not, it's not that long ago and I think it's great if we can just pause for a moment and actually think about them for a bit. Because they, they're part of, our, part of our family, they're part of us. We still carry, carry the, D, the DNA that they had. And um, let's just, you know, let's just pause in our modern lives for a second and have a think about what are they, they went through.